The Force is with you, young Skywalker. But you are not a Jedi yet. Hey, what is up, YouTube fam? It's Dupree, aka Darth Hater here with some fresh, brand new Star Wars news for you. But before we get into it, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, and also check out my last video because it greatly helps out the channel. So let's get into it. According to the producer of Andor, the upcoming second season of the show is going to be quite different than what the world is watching right now. Much to the surprise of many, the Disney Plus series following Cassian Andor from Rogue One has been phenomenal for many. In fact, a lot of people have claimed it to be one of the best pieces of Star Wars storytelling ever. Previously, it has been revealed that the first 12 episodes of the show will cover a span of the year. The next batch, which begins shooting, which begins filming soon will explore the next four it's a unique shift in storytelling structure which will help at least in part make the final make the final half of the andor series very different from the first in an interview with rolling stone andor producer tony gilroy discussed how season two of his hit show would differ from the first he went on to say it just would have been physically impossible we're about to start shooting the second half in the month so we've been prepping for the whole last year there's two directors in Pinewood Studios in the UK that are prepping right now and I'm getting ready to go over there and they're trying to get all the scripts together. He continued explaining how the final season will be very different about what he hopes will make the meal feel very satisfying. And I'm hoping what we're going to do in the second half will make the meal feel very satisfying because the first year is really about him becoming and the last line of this stretch of 12 episodes will sum up where we've been trying to get to and we come back a year later it'll be very different the next four years of the story are not about becoming a revolutionary they're about learning to become a leader and how difficult it is to put the alliance together and what happens to the people who are the original gangsters versus the establishment and a lot of the different other issues with the first season, the story takes its time exploring what is relatively small time frame, fleshing out as many details as possible. How could that change going into season two, which will cover four years instead of one? Gilroy specifically pointed out how they found playing around with the negative space was something they enjoyed while also teasing betrayals amongst the cast in future installments. He went on to say, I'm carrying forward something like 30 characters, so what becomes interesting is now we can play the negative space. When you jump a year, what happens between? You know the people, you know what their trajectory was. It's energizing. We will be starting new characters. Obviously, in the next 700 pages, there will be all kinds of new things and we'll just get it as granular as we ever were. And really the second half is about what, what does time do to these people? People grow up and people get tired and people betray each other and people change their minds and people get weak and people get crazy. Formerly a director of season one of Andor had stated how Gilroy had a mandate to keep his droids and aliens in the background for the most part, but why? The director noted how it's all due to logistics and how if you introduce a character you have to explain also all their plummeting and, uh, and their health issues he said i think we'll be addressing some of that as we go along a bit more sometimes it's problematic in storytelling where you can't just introduce a character you have to introduce all their plumping and all their health issues people said why do you have the aliens on narcina 5 why didn't you have aliens on Narking of Five, where Andor's in prison. You see all five facilities that are in the lake, so it's easy for me to imagine that there are other ones that's all the aliens. But what are the mechanics of what you can do and build? And what would the bathroom be like on the factory floor? Don't even get, I don't even really know. You get into a bunch of other issues that become just a little too complicated sometimes to go into, but we will be doing more of that as we go along. Despite that, the storyteller promised there will be a lot more about the aliens later on. And I understand that there's some people that feel like there's been shading slightly, but that's probably the primary reason it adds a level of complexity. It adds a level of political complexity, but we will be going there. Look, we're going all the way to Rogue One. There's a lot of that coming up. Seeing how well the first season has been received, many seem to have no doubt that the show will continue to maintain the same, same level of quality. But there's no denying, however, the covering four separate years of time leading to that second season feeling distinctly 
different. In a sense, it could have more episodic feel seeing as there will be four separate bundles, three episode arcs, which is far from the bad thing. However, the closer the story gets to Rogue One, the more it'll feel necessary to connect to a wider universe and its library of characters and plot. Up to this point, the series has been fairly focused on its own dealings with Mon Mothma being the biggest connection to the wider franchise. Going forward, it would make sense for the story to bring into the characters that fans know and love. People such as Hera from Star Wars Rebels who goes on to have a high ranking and general involvement in the rebellion. The series could also bring Grand Admiral Thrawn in some points as the Imperial officer tasked with tracking down rebel activity, something he excels at. What do I think about this? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with them with the how they're taking it with uh, the four years and everything, but at the same time, you know, it's a Star Wars and I kind of want to see a little bit more aliens and droids. I understand where they're going and that does detract specifically with this part in the timeline. The Empire is very xenophobic, so you don't really see a lot of aliens with humans, and they kind of separate the aliens with that. Palpatine kind of instilled a very xenophobic view of the galaxy. Most everybody in the Empire, almost 99.9% .9 of everybody in the Empire is human, aside from Grand Admiral Thrawn, who was just mentioned here. He's the only one, and a few others, but I feel like it'll be explained in the show as well, because we always got that in the books, but it was kind of never really described on screen. As far as season two goes, I have high hopes. They'll just propel the story in better ways that it's already been right now. Like the show is great. My only real gripe with it is that it's a little slow. That's with any great show, it's always a slow burn. Look at Breaking Bad. The first two seasons were very slow, and then the third season, or towards the end of the second season, into the third, that's where things just got going, and it took off from there. But anyway, let me know what you guys thought about this excerpt. Let me know what you expect from Andor Season 2 coming up. Do you expect the same quality or what? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you're not subscribed to your channel, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell to get notifications for all my latest videos. That would be great. Anyway, guys, take care. See you in the next one. May the force be with you. Bye.